My name is Lesya Zasadna. I am from Ukraine, from Lviv, which is very close to Poland, actually. Uh, I'm, my title is an information developer, uh, which is a really fancy name for a technical writer, more like that. And I work in the environment that's like the big software outsourcing company. So basically, we have many projects and deal with many different companies around the world and uh, do software for them, and incidentally, documentation as well. Um, and my the talk title is not going to be exclusively about documentation. I hope that those of you that work in uh, development or other environments find it useful too. But it's going to be about the thing, uh, about the requirements that you know were there, about the things that you weren't asked to do, but somehow the things that were expected of you anyway. And you know, you'll, you're, you're guilty anyway, somehow like that. So. Um, but before we start, uh, I'd like to actually ask you to participate a bit. Uh, please, those of you who have yeah, laptops or, or phones and hopefully internet connection, go to this address. It's polab.com slash lesezasadna, which is my name, 096. Uh, it will just take uh, two minutes of your time, but it's going to be a, a really cool thing that we're going to do. You should see a screen like that, or similar. Any luck? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so while the rest of you connect, I just uh, want to say what it's about. So I'd like to ask you to give me one word in there. Tap there one word um, that describes your customer's attitude to your work. Well, let's, for argument's sake, let's call it documentation. Um, so what do you think they think about it? Or maybe you know. Uh, would they think your documentation is impressive or interesting or hopefully not boring but can happen also as you know or if, if, you, if you don't want to put it in one word just uh, just type it together like if you have uh, like a too long or too expensive just no spaces yeah uh, try to do it that way and we're gonna go and see what we what we have just a second <coughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and, is there? Ah, yeah, okay. Good, so we can actually see a live cloud that's updating according to your responses. And I can see that the biggest one is awesome, which is awesome, uh, great. Um, improving, colorful, oh, that's beautiful. Uh, correct, it's great. Extensive, uh, there's definitely lots of positive things. and. I'm glad that we have this documentation that's moving uh, in the right direction and that we have this connection with our, uh, with our customers. Uh, there are, however, uh, some, some responses that show us that, and sometimes I, uh, well, I often feel like that, that it's not just there yet. So it's, it's good, it's great, but there's something might be still missing. Uh, so that like, we have this incomplete that often uh, often is a problem tedious but necessary or oh, definitely uh, like okay um so definitely good to know that there's both things here and we're gonna try and figure <coughs> out uh so how to move from this uh this slightly mm, like more uh, situation that's not that perfect to to the to that awesome which is like huge and big in the center Let's let's try and reach that. Um, good. Um, just a second. Nope, not yet. Huh. Huh. Let me just go. Yeah, it's there. And yeah, great. Uh, so yeah. What, uh, what I often found in, uh, in my work is that um, sometimes it's awesome, but sometimes <coughs> it's not. And what is uh, more surprising is that sometimes you get all of it right, the technical details, like the length, the searchability, you put all yourselves, yourself into it, and the response from the customer is like, yeah, that's okay. And it's like, damn, I worked two weeks to make it super, and then you get okay. So what's the deal with that? What does it happen? So you kind of deliver what your customer, oh, not that one. Yeah, you kind of deliver what your customer wants, which they say is, like, for example, API documentation. But the question is, is it like something that they want in the end? 
or is it want something different? So I have this uh, situation in my project that we had three people uh, in documentation and we were doing a really great job and getting all the positive feedbacks. But at some point they like said, oh, you know, we're uh, going to reduce the team from three to two. And we were like, why? But why? Like, I mean, everything's great, right? And they said, yeah, 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 everything is totally right, but uh, we have this budget cut and we're thinking about what to sacrifice and yeah, documentation seems like the least, uh, the, the easiest thing to sacrifice. And we were like, <coughs> okay, so this got us thinking, so, uh, so documentation is not, even if it may be good, so how do you make it great? How, uh, how can, can documentation be mission critical for them? Can it be something that's uncuttable or I don't know how else to say it, right? So how do you, how do you make it stick? And there was um, another point to this all, what, what this talk is going to be about is like we had another project, uh, was a help system for uh, training management software for aviation, like it's really some complex and legal stuff there and the application itself was not that intuitive uh, which is why the help system was really like a live server for many users but there was this product owner who didn't really think documentation was necessary and even though we had this proof and statistics that people got stuck uh, on the application the analytics of help system usage somehow in the end he was still like nah I don't see the value in it and we were like, but come on, we definitely know it's needed. Other people definitely know it's needed. Users are sending us, you know, all flowers to the doorstep. But the product owner is like, uh, not convinced. So sometimes it's even hard to find a reasonable reason why, uh, why we have this attitude to documentation that we all come across it one way or another. <coughs> uh, but if that happens, you... You can just go with it or you can try something different. Like in our case, uh, we try to be uh, sort of uh, skimming and spying. And well, we noticed that this application, uh, the, the child of this product owner, it had many, um, sort of say, Mac style features or Apple style features, although it was a Windows application. And then we kind of uh, found out that he was a fan of, uh, of Apple and stuff. So. We uh, went ahead and redesigned our help system a bit to be more that style too. And next time when we presented the updates, we presented the updated design and he was already less uh, negative towards the documentation. Uh, so sometimes it's, it's not pretty, it's not nice, it's not logical, but sometimes you have to, um, the, like the attitude to your work, the success of your work depends on all these people moments and I don't know how to call them political moment, sorry, uh, or something like that. Um, all these things, the tricky things that you have to do to get it right. Uh, so I hope this introduction makes sense to you. Uh, and so the rest of the talk is going to be mostly like uh, in that direction and how we try to work out a scheme to try to take into account all the, all the possible moments, all the possible requirements that could potentially shut down what you're doing, even though you're doing it super great. It's uh, good so far? Yeah? Okay, great. Let's see what I'm not. Uh, oh, um, no, no, no. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's try to, let's start with finding out if we can uh, understand what our customers really want in the end. Like, might not be eternal glory or something else, but so there's the short term goal, which might be, for example, API documentation, and there might be a long term goal, which, which they want to achieve in the end. And so, uh, usually, at least in our company, we would focus on delivering really great short term goal, really great API documentation, but we wouldn't bother that much with thinking how it would fit in into the global general customer strategy or would it still be bringing value in like five years or something? Mm, and to be honest, that's not usually the kind of information we get. So basically, in our in our world, when we get a when we get a documentation request, it's like, hey, we need this. And it was like, okay, uh, but why would you need one like a chat? And they would say, oh, okay, it's very logical because we want to do this, and because in the end we want uh, we want something. It to do this, yeah. So basically, usually, what what we get the information is like about the audience, the staff, the slow level information that we need to take into account. But that's basically it. 
but what uh, our customers just don't come to us to cry on our shoulders and say, I want to be a manager of this company someday, and that's why I need this documentation, right? So we usually don't know what's their ultimate goal, what they ultimately want, why they want this documentation in the end. Well, another reason is that they might not be knowing it themselves yet or thinking about it. But um, yeah, the question is, so uh, why they ultimately want this documentation, how it can help them uh, in the end. And uh, that's interesting also thing we found, that once we started figuring it out and trying to like um, pick up the stuff like, hey, your digital officer said you want to go completely digital in this segment, let's try to uh, create more web-based documentation uh, than printables. And they were like, yeah, wow. And uh, once you come up with these ideas, get the hang of it, and uh, you know, try to drive these things, they can even forgive you some shortcomings. like. With this chair, uh, like uh, we have this very, very precise product owner that would, you know, say like, uh, this document is okay, but on page 53 uh, you have a screenshot with a slightly a thinner frame than on all other pages, and we were like, no, no, okay, okay, we'll fix this. But this, the thing is, when you get your customers excited more about this big picture, they tend to forgive you or forgive you for all these like small things that. Pokemon can never get everything right. There's always some little thing. And even the most pickiest product owners, they would tend to be more forgiving and more excited once you also focus more on the big picture than on the smaller, smaller, smaller stuff. Things like that. All uh, right. So yeah, uh, the thing to, to get the ultimate goal of your of your customer. It's usually hidden, it's usually not there, it's something, the small requirement that they don't tell you <coughs> actually. And that's why the talk of this title, the requirements that you didn't know were there. So, yeah, uh, I'll just kind of, um, not trying to invent the wheel or something, but I will tell you how it was in our situation. I'll try to tell you the stories that we learned from and hopefully it helps you too. Mm. And yeah, this is especially difficult on sorry, especially difficult on the new projects and with the new customers because if you're working in some environment for a long time, you usually know already the people and the stuff and the situations. But if it's something new, it's usually a bit more overwhelming. So in our case, it was just a new customer, a huge logistics company, and then they had an IT department that we were supposed to extend and um, kind of be a part of their team. And what we ended up with was 12 uh, small sub-projects. It was different kind of applications like mobiles, uh, web applications, portals, backend infrastructure, whatever. We have, we have all these things that we worked on. And our small documentation team, uh, we, had, we tried to find out how we could contribute to each of these small sub-projects. So it was kind of a mess at first because in total there were like 100 people from both sides, ours and theirs. On, on this project and it was like, you know, how do you remember them all? And um, if some of you were uh, here the year before, uh, you might remember this. Uh, I did a small lightning talk about the only deliverable that mattered and it was about that we tried to create this <coughs> cork board with a list of small sub-projects and people there and stuff and even pin the stuff they liked. Like we had this one guy who Every status, every status meeting, every day he would say that his status was still alive because he was like overwhelmed. So we put it up just there uh, next to his name, still alive, you know, all these things like that. So we tried to keep a map of this whole huge project and all of the sub projects uh, like in one place. And yeah, and it can be really, really overwhelming at first trying to get to know all the people and how any of them is related and can impact your work in any way. So the main thing you you do is basically focus, focus on the two persons. Uh, the first person is uh, like the, um, the direct representative from the customer side, like this front line. It's usually like, in our case it was a product owner who uh, told us the requirements, participated in the status meetings, who uh, helped us fix something if it went wrong or something like that. So it's like the immediate contact person. And another person is usually their manager or supervisor. It's some kind of a 
business person who would uh, want to keep informed about the project process on the high level, uh, the, how everything goes, and they would usually be the one who request this project and control the budget and have a capability to shut it down if, if, if this budget was exceeded or something. So these are the two kind of persons they want to take into account and um, I'm just going to have a, a story that relates to that is that uh, there was this uh, mobile app and uh, for various reasons it badly needed API documentation and we sort of prepared a solution about how uh, how we can deliver it and our product owner was a techie guy so we really uh, like focused on how we would implement it, what operational benefits it would have and things like that and uh, like he was really on board, he was yeah 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 let's do it and so we thought we got it. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, actually uh, what happened next is this product, uh, we didn't take into account that this product owner wasn't the decision maker. He had this manager of his that he had to go to for approval on the budget and the additional resources. So basically, um, we convinced this product owner, but uh, what we didn't think about what happens next. And in the end, when he went to his manager and uh, repeated the same benefits, those benefits weren't really working for his manager because uh, his manager wanted to know the exact numbers. Like, uh, we just told him in general that, yeah, yeah, sh for sure it would cost the, cut the cost of onboarding new front-end developers and QAs. But we didn't bother really calculating by how much, and that's what his manager wanted to know. And then he said, okay, go back to them and give me the numbers, and then I will think. And that was a hassle, and in the end it was approved, but on a much smaller scope. Uh, so yeah, the first, uh, the first tip is no, um, know your people, know the, from the customer side, who directly influence it. Try to think of all the stages your documentation goes through and who can potentially shut it down and who can <coughs> potentially give it a lift if you find the right arguments for them. So that's the first case. Uh, just a second. <coughs> So, this was the case, we learned our lesson, and then came another <coughs> story. <clears throat> and this is the point I'd like to highlight, it's about LSN competitors. Um, well, it can be about the uh, sort of um, the business competitors of our customer on the market, and things like that, but usually more like the marketing area. But in this sense, I'd like to focus more on <clears throat> the allies and competitors of these of our two persons that we care about. The, well, I would call them product owner and business owner, just to put some tags on them. It can be different for you, but basically uh, the roles are like this. So, uh, another case was that, um, oh no, just before that, I wanted to highlight that usually uh, like when you, when you think about the customer side in our company, usually kind of, um, approach it as like this one unified team marching together towards the same business goal according to corporate strategy and you know like it's all regimented at this but the thing is just like in our work environments in the customer's work environment um, it's kind of compiled comprised of people who end up there uh, uh, somehow in different ways and have to stick together and work together and kind of have their own stories with each other and, and so on. So it's very important to take into account this um, personal stuff going on in their uh, environments, but especially if they're uh, like located remotely, it's kind of hard to observe that. But there are ways, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, but first, this case about <coughs> Alice and competitors is just one of my favorites. Um, after a while, after we did this API documentation for one mobile solution, we got another sub-project that started also about a mobile application similar business case. So we thought, yeah, and API documentation would be good for them too. So and this time we learned on our mistakes. We um, prepared a detailed financial this report based on the previous project of how exactly our documentation cut costs, how exactly it was like beneficial. So we took everything into account and supposed to go exactly right. 
uh, but it didn't. And the reason was a bit different. So this time, the reason was that um, like we mostly based our presentation on like how for that project it was good and how that PO benefited from it and how good that that PO thought it was um, great to start this documentation at the project start, not as an afterthought or whatever. And um, what it turned out is that this PO and that PO didn't get along. Ouch. <laughs> we didn't take that into account. We didn't know that really, and we didn't think that we would have to know it. But because we presented all in that way, like this new uh, product owner, like he, those two product owners, they were sort of competing for the same promotion or things like that. And uh, so this new PO, he didn't like to be to to look like he's following in another product owner's steps. So it was like, yeah, it's great, it's person, but mm, yeah, I'll think, I'll think about it. And that was the end of it. And it was like, but why? But why? You know? And in the end, after a month, when we found out about these things, we were like, damn. So uh, really, before that, in my six years of experience, I never had to deal with that, never had to think about all of that. But in the end, when you know that you're a good professional, you do good work, and because of things like that, it's... I don't know, it may sink. Uh, it kind of makes you think that, yeah, maybe sometimes it's better to, well, it's worth <coughs> taking time to try and think these things through and uh, like maybe, I don't know, uh, if you're in rough estimates or something, maybe cheat a little bit on the scope, maybe like do something quicker, but yeah, really do everything you can to try and get into this stuff as well. Um, somehow like that. Um, another thing that's very important is um, the personality types of these customers. So previously we focused more like on business stuff and their well, business relationships with each other. What also matters is uh, what kind of person they are in a way that, um, how do you say, which of their personality traits could potentially impact your work in like, um, how do they react under stress? Or, um, for example, if there is a situation that they, uh, I don't know, um, don't tell you the deadline until the last day, you don't have time to deliver it fully, so you deliver something partially, but when their manager asks them why it happened, he will say, oh, they're just, you know, they were just so lazy, they, I know I told them the deadline months ago, but now they come up with a part, I'll keep their ass, something like that. So how likely, uh, how likely is that to happen also, because, uh, because it happens. So there are different ways you can, you can try and figure out their personality traits like this. It's like, um, well, whenever you have an open-ended discussion or open-ended question to ask, try to do it not via email and follow-up call, just make a call directly or a direct discussion because then you're more likely to uh, find out um, like to, to know the reasoning behind this thing, like to hear some reason why they would reach one uh, conclusion or another. Uh, try to personalize the conversation, drop in some bits of, of personal information, jokes and stuff and people are likely to respond in that way. This is also another source. Also, um, try to pay attention to how people phrase things. This is very, very important, very huge, uh, really huge source of information. Like, uh, for example, if they would tell you about uh, some policy change, how would they phrase it? Like, is it a passive approach we were told to, or is it an active approach our company decided to? Because it shows you if they're more like a team player or more like a person for themselves. Uh, so there are many things like that that can really tell you. Uh, also, one of my favorites is talk to people you don't have to talk to technically, meaning like mm, on our side there were people we worked with and there were other people on who we didn't have to deal uh, work-wise at all, but we went out to some dinners and they would feel more relaxed towards you because they have like no, nothing to fear, no interests, nothing whatsoever, and they would be more open in communicating and they wouldn't like tell the secrets or something, but just, just life situations that you know, could mean something to you. Uh, and the most important thing is don't lose it all. If you collect it all, 
create some sort of a knowledge base or whatever with a tap it down, ask your colleagues to contribute, and together you can have you can have this huge source of information, and you um, may want to may be able to track down the points uh, that might backfire later if you don't include them, uh, if you don't think about them before you start your work. Um, there's one more thing. Uh, that's not that important, so I'm probably going to skip because that's not much time. Uh, so yeah, I've touched down, I think, on mostly what I wanted to tell you. So um, try, try to, to see if there's something, uh, well, I think it related to you on some levels, and maybe there are some hints you can go and use in your work uh, and make a king. <coughs> Uh, and to just to leave you with some just one phrase that you can um, take it with you is like try to focus on people as much as you focus on tasks. Uh, and this will I'm sure that this will help you in some way to to try and make it better, um, deliver something that is better than before, more topical than before, uh, that's bound to bring you a wow. Uh, from from your customers, if it's I know an external customer or just someone from another department who asks you for something, it can be anyone. But yeah, that's uh, in our work that was the key that helped us improve, and I hope it was meaningful for you. Um, yeah, no time for that. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, you're great. Uh, contact us. Uh, I don't follow our blog. We have a team uh, blog in uh, We have lots of cool articles there. WordPress and from .com. Follow us there. I know if you feel like follow us through our official corporate channels, and of course follow me personally. Uh, I mean, I follow, uh, but contact me personally. I usually try to limit my social media interaction to Facebook, so feel free to reach out to me there. Skype email is also for you, and of course I'm personally here. Just happy to talk to everyone, and hope I can learn from you something too. Uh, if you have any thoughts or ideas on the subject, so thank you again. You're great.